All right, so uh, I have just five examples here. I'm going to quickly go through just so you can see what they do. So number one is this spinning circles right here. OK, that's all that is. So I'm going to go into the spinning circles. <clears throat> and I'm going to get rid of all of these except for just one of them, which is uh, not that one. I'm going to this one here. And just watch that. OK, so that's all this one is, is just this like half circle kind of spinning around. And the way that it's done is I drew a circle using the shape tool, just like we've done before. And, um, and I did this all right inside of After Effects. So all of these are done in After Effects. So you could utilize tools in After Effects too. You don't have to stick with just what's inside of Illustrator. So I drew an ellipse. I added a trim path. And then just by tweaking the start and end of the trim path, I'm able to control exactly like how much of that is showing. Okay. Now, the other part that I did on here was on the offset for it. That's how it's actually rotating around. I wrote an expression which does this. Okay, It takes the uh, index, which is basically the layer number. Okay, Remember, we talked about variables, like time is a, a variable that After Effects has. Index is another one. So if I wanted to offset something, I can use its index to automatically offset it so that when I duplicate it, it'll automatically go to the next one. So this is index times 10 times time. So basically, as time is moving, it's going 10 times as fast. And then based on its number, it's going that much faster. So this one here, which is layer number one, um, spins pretty slow. When I duplicated that and I get the next one, has the same expression. Uh, I just changed the 10 to a 30 to get it to go even faster. I change the start and end point. I change the thickness of it. And then I duplicate it again and got this one. I duplicate it again and got that one. Duplicate it again and get this one. And just by doing these kinds of things, you can very easily add a level of complexity to your stuff without a whole lot of work. This is literally just one shape I've duplicated, scaled up, adjusted some of its properties, um, and then changed its speed, and then I get something like that. Okay, so think about stuff like that you could add to yours. <clears throat> uh, where is comp one, two, there it is. All right, uh, and now I have this one. Okay, and this one is pretty simple. It's, it's basically using um, the pen tool to draw out the shape that I want and then using the trim path to have it follow it, and then having a little circle at the end. Oops. OK. And I did this once, and then duplicated it and offset it. So here is the first one. Uh, this one, there we go. OK, so you'll see I animated the trim path. So this thing just follows the trim path. That's all it does. And then I've timed it up so that at the end, a little circle comes up. Then I just duplicated it, moved it up, duplicated it, moved it up, duplicated it, moved it up. I could have also pre-composed it and then duplicated that and offset it if I wanted to. Um, but it all just depends on how you want to do that kind of thing. And then I just kind of branched them off from one to the other so that I could have like one going into the next one um, like that. Okay. Um, simple thing there. Here's line tracking. So what this one's doing is, again, another trim path. Um, but this one has a couple things on it. One of them is a trim path that writes out the initial shape of it. The next one is a trim path with just a little area that's doing the same thing. It's just offsetting it along the way. So let me get rid of all of these except for one, just so you can see this first one. So that's all that does. It just writes it out and gets rid of it. And I added that looping expression. So once it gets to the end, it jumps back and plays it again. So it's just doing that over and over again. So I animated the start or the end of this going like that. And then I animated the start of it going like that. And then I added that loop expression to both of them so that it loops over and over and over again. And then what I did was I duplicated that whole setup, modified the start and end of the trim path to give me 
Where'd you go? There it is. Uh, to give me just this small little segment, I can make that bigger if I wanted. And now I would have this bigger section. And then I just offset it so that it wasn't lined up perfectly with it. OK, so again, just something kind of technological you could add into the background or into the sides of it just to kind of make it feel a little bit more alive. OK, and then again, I just kind of duplicated that, offset them all. You will never get like an exact like, you know, put a keyframe here, put a keyframe here, everything's going to work. It took a, a few minutes of tweaking to make sure that all the things kind of lined up perfectly. OK, so don't be afraid to play with those. Uh, this one here. Uh, this one is a little radar blip. And this was drawn everything in, in After Effects. Again, you could draw it in Illustrator. That's not a huge deal. Uh, but I just want to show, too, that you could do that inside of uh, After Effects. Um, so the start of this was just this shape. It does nothing at all. Then I have this, which is a blip. You can see the little blip happen right there. Um, he should actually be up here with the rest of the blips. There we go. All right, so there's a line of dots, line of dots, line of dots, line of dots, and then this thing. So this is just like, if you remember our page transition, this is a thick stroke that just rotates. That's all it's doing. So I've used the trim path to section it off. It's a pretty thick stroke. If I change this here, you can see where that stroke would allow me to update the size of that. And then it just rotates around. That's all it's doing. And then I just added a bunch of little blips so that as it gets into that area, you can see the blips happening. Okay, so that might be something that I want to keep in there. If I would like how the blips looked, I would then go back to here, maybe duplicate these blips again, and then scoot these down so that they happen as this gets into that area again. Okay, um, so so far all that stuff is stuff we've done. It's just applying them differently. This one is something that we haven't really covered yet. Uh, which is making something 3D and kind of move in 3D inside of After Effects. So this is a, uh, an Earth spinning around, and you see I have these kind of like noise patterns on it. I have this um, like pulsating wave kind of coming in the middle of it. <clears throat> and then I also have, if you look closely at some of the um, continents, you'll see I have these like little radar blips happening on there too. Okay. So this is a little bit more complex. The only thing that is um, incredibly different here is just the one plugin that I used. So I'm going to strip this down to just the essentials. OK, I have a background color. I have this earth. The reason I have a background color is because the original map that I found um, was transparent. So I wanted to have something there so it wasn't transparent fully, so I found this. This was a um, royalty-free map of the U.S., or the, the U.S., of the world, um, used for commercial purposes, non-commercial purposes with editing, so I'm good to use it. So I take this, and I just imported it here, drug it down to a new composition, um, and that makes a composition that fits this perfectly. Okay, This is a flattened-out version of the Earth. Um, then... I added all these little blip type things to it. And this is just random. I just kind of randomly added these things all over the place just to have these things kind of like, you know, something happen there. Um, and then I have these other lines on top of it. Okay. So this line is basically a, um, a beam effect. Let me make a new solid just so we can see just the beam effect. And it's under uh, generate. It's under beam. I've shown this before. Um, I played with the length to get it to be full size. Um, I played with the thickness to get it at an appropriate size. I think it was like two or one. I played with the coloration. Oops. This way, this way, that way. And then I uh, took the softness off. And this gives me just a solid line. And then I went into my distort. And I kind of played around with a couple of these to find one that I liked. Uh, but I believe I used um, uh, Griddler. No, what did I use? Flow motion, that was it. Effect, distort, flow motion, this one. 
And the way this tool works is that you have a point here. I turn these off. Let me turn them back on. I have a point right here, and I have a point right here. And then as I crank up the amount, it tweaks basically these points. So let me pull up this one too. And so you'll get kind of like this distortion on these lines. And then all I did was animate the lines moving up with this little um, flow motion thing happening. And I animated it moving up by animating these positions. Okay, just that start point and end point, and then move the Ys up so they moved at the same rate. Okay. Um, and I just duplicated that, offset uh, some of the uh, parameters, not that yet. And so I got this. Okay, so it kind of looks like old TV lines or scan lines, something happening on there. Um, and on the very top of this, I made a new solid. And um, I wanted this to have kind of like that um, uh, TV look, like an old-fashioned TV. Under my effects, um, you can go to TV. And here's a bunch of special effects presets that you can drop in. Now, these are basically um, several different filters dropped into this thing that automatically make it look kind of like TV-ish. So I just double click it on that layer and you can see this is what it does. It adds a wave warp to kind of distort some of it. It adds a blur, it adds a color balance, and it adds some noise and a Venetian blind. Um, if you're unsure of what any of these do, turn them all off and then just go one by one. So here's what wave warp is doing. And if I hit play, you can kind of see the edges are uh, wiggling a little bit. I can also enhance this so if I can see this better. Okay, so that's what Wave Warp does. And then um, Box Blur is just softening this so it's not a um, crisp edge. Color Balance is giving us a little bit of coloration to it. Um, I should probably give this a different color. Let's say green. Oops. I can hit Y. There we go. Go. So here's our color balance. It's not really doing a whole lot right now, but it's there. Uh, noise adds noise to this. And then Venetian blind is what actually gives us those lines. And this is basically like how thick do you want those lines to be. There's that transition complete. And then here's the width of each line. OK, so it gives you, again, just that technological thing uh, on top of it. OK, so that's the look of it. Um, now if I go to what is this globe? I drop my globe comp into a new composition. And then I go here and I go to sphere. There's a plugin called CC Sphere. If I just double click, it takes that flat image and wraps it into a sphere. So now uh, I can go to the um, uh, rotation, there it is, and I can rotate this and have it actually animate rotating around with my animation playing on this thing. Um, you can play with other stuff too, like the radius. You can play with the lighting and shading. Um, so if you needed to adjust the coloring of it, um, you can adjust the coloring of this as well. Okay, so these are just five different things that you can add to your stuff just to make them look a little bit more fancy, a little bit more designs, a little bit of animation stuff on there. They're just little assets, little components that you can just drop in. Okay, so um, that's all I had for today. I'll let you guys work. I'll be around to assist. Questions? No.